فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد سوره النبا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عما يتساءلون عن النبا العظيم الذي هم فيه مختلفون كلا سيعلمون ثم كلا سيعلمون الم نجعل الارض مهادا والجبال اوتادا وخلقناكم ازواجا وجعلنا نومكم سباتا وجعلنا الليل لباسا وجعلنا النهار معاشا وبنينا فوقكم سبعا شدادا وجعلنا سراجا وهاجا وانزلنا من المعصرات ماء ثجاجا لنخرج به حبا ونباتا وجنات الفافا ان يوم الفصل كان ميقاتا يوم ينفخ في الصور فتاتون افواجا وفتحت السماء فكانت ابوابا وسيرت الجبال فكانت سرابا ان جهنم كانت مرصادا للطاغين مابا لابثين فيها احقابا لا يذوقون فيها بردا ولا شرابا الا حميما وغساقا جزاء وفاقا انهم كانوا لا يرجون حسابا وكذبوا باياتنا كذابا وكل شيء احصيناه كتابا فذوقوا فلن نزيدكم الا عذابا ان للمتقين مفازا حدائق واعنابا وكواعب اترابا وكاسا دهاقا لا يسمعون فيها لغوا ولا كذابا جزاء من ربك عطاء حسابا رب السماوات والارض وما بينهما الرحمن لا يملكون منه خطابا يوم يقوم الروح والملائكه صفا لا يتكلمون الا من اذن له الرحمن وقال صوابا ذلك اليوم الحق فَمَن شَاءَ اتَّخَذَ إِلَى رَبِّهِ مَآبًا إِنَّا أَنذَرْنَاكُمْ عَذَابًا قَرِيبًا يَوْمَ يَنظُرُ الْمَرْءُ مَا قَدَّمَتْ يَدَاهُ وَيَقُولُ الْكَافِرُ يَا لَيْتَنِي كُنْتُ تُرَابًا سُورَةُ النَّبَأِ سُورَةُ النَّبَأِ إِذَا مَكِّ السُّورَةَ بِاتِّفَاقِ الْمُفَسِّرِينَ 
by consent of the scholars of Tafsir, Surah Al Naba is a Meccan Surah. There's no dispute amongst the ulama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, Amma yatasa'alun. What are they asking about? The word Amma in the Arabic language, two things have been done to it. Number one, it used to be an ma. That's what it used to be. An ma. So what happened? Two things happened. Number one, hudifat al alif. The alif was removed from the word ma. The alif in there. Ma. The alif got removed. Two, idgham happened between the noon and the mim. The noon got dropped. So it only became what? Am, ma, ayn, and a mim. And this is common in the Quran and it's common in the Arabic language. And inshallah ta'ala we will see it bi idnillahi al kareem in Surah Al Naziat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says fi ma. So fi ma is used. Mim ma is also used. And the reason why it was dropped is because it can be a question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says Amma ay an ayy shayin yasal kufaru maka. What are the disbelievers of Mecca asking about? That's one qawl, that's one opinion. The second opinion regarding the scholars of tafsir is the ones that are asking this question are not the mushrikeen, they are not the pagans, they are everybody. So there are two views about who is asking the question. The first opinion is the ones that are asking the question are the mushrikun, the pagans and the polytheists are asking this question. And inshallah ta'ala we're going to see what the question is. And their argument is because the reason why they believe that the ones that are asking the questions are the polytheists and the pagans is because the context restricts that meaning. They say after that Allah is going to be saying, Kalla sayalamuna, thumma kalla sayalamun. And this is only referring to the pagans. That's one view. The second view is that the ones who are asking the question are all of the people. The reason why they believe that is because, as you're going to see later, the surah is talking about resurrection. And the disbelievers already have made their decision regarding the resurrection. They don't believe in it. And they don't differ regarding the resurrection. They've already believed that there's no such a thing as a resurrection. That's why they said, "Aida mitna wa kunna turaba." If we die and we become dust, wa iraman and we become bones and flesh, aina la madinun. Are we going to be brought back? That's something that's not going to happen. They say. So they already made their minds up. The other group of scholars are saying that this is everybody is going to ask the question. And the reason why they believe everyone's going to ask is because the Muslim also asks questions, so his iman increases. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Amma, what are they asking about? Anin naba il azim. The second verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, They are asking about the great news. They are asking about the great news. The scholars, they differed regarding the great news. And their differences is three, three opinions. And we can emerge them into two opinions. What's this great news in which they are asking about each other? The first view is that what they are asking one another is the Quran. And the affairs pertaining to the Quran. This opinion is held by Mujahid ibn Jabr. Who is the student of Abdullah ibn Abbas. He believes that what these people are asking one another is the Qur'an. What is this? And this is what Allah is referring to as Al-Naba al azim the great news. The second view of the scholars is the great news in which they are asking about one another is Al-Ba'ath, the resurrection. And this is the view held by Qatadat ibn Da'amat al-Sadusi and Ibn Zayd. And Ibn Jarir al-Tabari rahimahullah, he strengthened both of those opinions to the people who I attributed it to. So he's saying it is authentically transmitted from Qatada, that it's the Qur'an according to him, and it's correctly transmitted 
from uh, sorry Mujahid that it's the Quran sorry and that Qatada and Ibn Zayd their opinion are authentically transmitted so we have two opinions regarding what they are asking about Allah says what is it that they are asking about the great news the great news is how many things it's either one of two opinions either the Quran or it's either the resurrection and there's a third opinion which is that it's the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but the, it doesn't show so and the strongest opinion from the two is that they are asking about the resurrection but the difference here is not a contradiction meaning anyone who's asking about the Quran they are also asking about resurrection because the resurrection is mentioned in the in the Quran so this ikhtilaf is called ikhtilaf al and the sabab of this ikhtilaf is called at tawatu fi al-kalam because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he removed the sifa and the mawsuf from its sifa and this is something we have already spoken about in muqaddimah fi usul tafsir ala kulli hal what is it that they are discussing and they are asking about is the resurrection Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he then says alladhi hum the resurrection in which they are fihi mukhtalifun in disagreement alladhi hum and if you look at it here Allah doesn't mention what they are disputing Allah left it vague and ambiguous Allah says alladhi hum fihi mukhtalifun about which they are in disagreement they became parties and they became groups regarding the resurrection and its affairs if we take the opinion of those who said that this is meant by resurrection then the parties broke into two parties a group that believes in the resurrection and a group that don't believe in the resurrection the groups that are believing in it are the believers and the ones who don't are the disbelievers if we take that the great news and nabaul azim is the quran then they're differing in three the first group are saying innahu qawlu sha'ir this quran is the speech of a poet the second is they are saying that this man is a fortune teller and the third one is they are saying huwa min indillah came from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this quran so the people are differing so whichever the view that we take if we say that the, the, the nabaul azim the great news is the quran then alladhi hum fihi mukhtalifuna those who are disagreeing are disagreeing in three views the first view is they are saying it's a qawlu sha'ir the other group uh, the other party are saying it's a kahin fortune teller and a magician and the third one is they are saying no it's from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is the believers and another group are saying asatir al awwalin these are the stories of the early people muhammad has been told these stories iktatabaha he wrote it from somebody fayatumla alayhi bukrat al wasila morning and evening somebody is dictating the quran from him to him and he's writing it if we say what they are differing is regarding the resurrection then there's a party who are accepting the resurrection and a party who's disagreeing the existence of the resurrection Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he then says kalla sayalamun thumma kalla sayalamun the word kalla in the Quran wherever you look at the Quran kalla has only come in two meanings and I will amaze you by telling you kalla has only come in the Quran 15 times sorry 33 times kalla has come in the Quran 33 times in the Quran and imagine this it only came in the first half of the Quran from Surah Al-Kahf downwards to Surah Al-Nas all of the kalla in the Quran are only there and they only have two meanings they only have two meanings the first meaning is Ar-Rad Al-Zajr which is to stay away from something to stay away from something or to scold the second one is it came in the second meaning as haqqan indeed the word kalla in the quran only means those two meanings and those are the only two meaning in which it holds and it is found in the quran 33 times and it is only in the first half of the quran 
Allah, so here, what does it mean? Here, Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, rahimahullah, he took the opinion that the kalla here is lirrad'i wa zajr Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Laysa al-amru, the matter is not as these disbelievers are claiming and rejecting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to resurrect his slaves. Sayalamuna they will come to know. The question here is, what are they going to know? They are going to know that the resurrection is true and that every single body is going to be resurrected and that there's no way out of it. Those who say, no, that this is not talking about resurrection, it's talking about the Quran. They say, Sayalamuna means they are going to know the day of judgment and al Quran that the Quran is true. And everything that the Quran has told us is the truth. And they are also going to know the outcome of their lying and their making up stories. When are they going to know this? And when are they going to find out? The scholars, they said that they're going to find out when death comes to them and the soul is taken out of their body. And they're also going to know when they're going to their graves and the angels come to them. And they're also going to know the day when they stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're going to know resurrection does exist. And they're also going to know that the Quran is the speech of Allah and it tells the truth. That day they will come to know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us, he says to us, and I want you to ponder here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now going to start talking about the universal signs. He's going to talk about the things that he has blessed us with and the things that he has done. And there's a reason why he does this subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll explain later when I finish all of the universal signs, the things that Allah has favoured us with. Brothers and sisters, wallahi, everything Allah is saying here has a powerful meaning. Ponder. Allah says, أَلَمْ نَجْعَلِ الْأَرْضَ mihada. Have we not made the earth as a bed? The word mihad, it means a place يَمْتَهِدُونَهُ وَيَفْتَرِشُونَهُ Like a bed. We spread the earth out for them. Did we not do this? In the Arabic language, this is called istifham ala sabil taqrir. Allah is asking a question, but He is actually asserting information. He is actually establishing something against you. This question that He is asking you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is a question within it is yes. Of course, oh Allah, you have. And He wants you to wake up. Because when a person is asked a question, Generally, it's a way to get his attention. So Allah is asking you, Alam naj'al, have we not made, and this naj'al is we, and it's out of royalty. Because the nahnu in the Quran, when it's used, it is used as al-mu'addimu, the one who uh, speaks out of royalty. Al-mu'addimu nafsahu, the one who speaks out of royalty. Because we in the Arabic language is used as one of two. Al-mutakallim ma'hu ghayruh. One who is speaking and then somebody else is speaking with him. And it's also used as a person who is speaking out of royalty. So Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala, Alam naj'al, have we not made al-arda this earth mihadan as a bed? We flattened it for you. You are walking on it. You are going and you're doing what you want. Have we not did this for you? Subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to you. Then Allah says, Wal jibala. And have we not made the mountains awtadan as pegs? The word awtad is jam'u watad. And the watad in the Arabic language is what you use for a tent, when you want to hold a tent. When Allah created this earth, when Allah created this earth, this earth started to move. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pegged the mountains on it so that the earth doesn't move. And if you look at the world today, the places that have more mountains generally don't have earthquakes. Allah has made this earth, mountains on it, on it, for it not to move and not to shake on its people. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is saying, Alam naj'al, have we not made 
الأرض مهادا have we not made this earth as a bed والجبال and have we not made the mountains أوتادا as pegs on this earth the answer again here is what of course oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are the one who made this earth uh, a bed for us, a place we can walk on and spread it out for us. And oh Allah, you are the one who pegged these mountains on this earth. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want you all to ponder here. These mountains that are pegged on this earth, what is Allah going to say about it later? In the same surah, how does Allah speak about the mountains? You're going to see inshallah ta'ala and ponder. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Allah says, we have created you, وخلقناكم. we have created you all, as جن in pairs. The Mufassirin, they differed here. What is meant by وخلقناكم أزواجا? And they differed in two views. The first view, they said, أزواجن here means males and female. That's one. Allah created a man, and then he created for every man a woman to fulfill his desires for the offspring of mankind to carry on. Allah said, I made men and women. That's one view. The other view of scholars, they say, وَخَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا أَزْوَاجًا Here means أَصْنَافًا We have made you in different types. One that's tall, one that's short, one that's good looking, one that's not good looking, one that's dark, one that's light, one that's a male, one that's a female. I have created you in different types. So the scholars, they differ what is meant by azwajan. Allah says, am I not, with the previous question that's asked, wa we have created you azwajan, in pairs, or we created you male and female. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, wa ja'alna, and we have made nawmakum your sleep, and we have made your sleep Subatan as a thing for rest. The word subatan, the word subatan, here actually means, in the Arabic language, in its linguistic meaning, it means inqita, disconnection. That's what it linguistically means. Like in Ibn Faris, in his Mu'jam Maqais al he defined it not according to its linguistic meaning, but according to what would come out from its linguistic meaning. In other words, Allah is saying, I have made sleep a disconnection of tiredness. In other words, you relax. I have made the sleeping you sleep. Subatan means inqita, it means disconnection. About or something to cut. What is it that's cutting from you? The tiredness and the fatigue that you were enduring the whole day. Qata'a, it gets disconnected from you. What happens here? Al-raha, was-sakina, tranquility, calm, relaxation occurs. Who's the one who's giving you this? You look at a person who's sleeping at night, his mouth is open, he doesn't know what's happening. Who's protecting him? Who's looking after him? The minute he sleeps, he wakes up and he's fresh. His mind, his head, everything. Allah is saying, I am the one who has made for you a sleep, for you to find from that sleep a rest. Allah is saying subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَجَعَلْنَا We have made for you. Al-layla, the night. We have made the night as a covering. Libasan, it means covering. What is it that the night covers you from? The night, it covers you from the sun, the ray that comes from the sun. If it was 24-7 daytime, you wouldn't be able to sleep. The sun would be in your eyes. When you want to sleep, you switch off the lights. You make the room dark. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, I have made the night to cover you. So when you sleep and you relax, you can properly sleep. Also, I have also blessed you with this night. That if you want to hide from the people's eyes, because you have to remember back at those times, the people they wanted to leave if they were scared of an enemy at night time. I have made this dark, pitch black, a time for you to run away from your enemies so they won't be able to see you. Also, this night and this dark, I have covered it 
So the one who wants to stand up in the last third of the night and wants to come with sincerity so nobody sees him, he's also able to stand up. And Allah says in the Quran, إِلَّا آلَ لُوطٍ And the people of Lut, نَجَّيْنَاهُمْ بِسَحَرٍ We saved them at night time. Surah Al-Qamar, Ayah 34. At night time Allah saved them. So when was it they traveled to get away from the enemy? At night time. So this is what I have done for you. He says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَجَعَلْنَا We have made for you Nahara, We have made the day for you. Allah is saying, Ma'ashan, We have made it for you. وَقْتًا لِلْتَعَيُّشِ A time for you to live and to get up and to go and to look for a livelihood. To look for your rizq. It's made bright for you so you can drive, so you won't hit somewhere, so you don't need lights. I am the one who provided you with a day where you can go and you can look for your rizq and you can look for the blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Talabul ma'ash. It's a time for you to get up and to leave and to look for your livelihood. I am the one who has done this for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says. And then Allah goes on to say, وَبَنَيْنَا فَوْقَكُمْ سَبَعًا شِدَادًا And we have built above you seven strong heavens, um, samawat. We have built over you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says. وَبَنَيْنَا We have built. بَنَيْنَا here means رَفَعْنَا We have placed over you, Muhammad. And all you believers, and all of mankind, Sab'a Samawat, seven layers of Samawat. Why did Allah use the word Shidadan? Shidadan here means Muhakkimatun, Muhakkimatin. This Samawat has actually been solidified. Look what Allah says. Hal tara min futur? Farji'il basara. Look at the Samawat. Do you see any cracks in it? No. There's no cracks. There's no cracks that are done to it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has solidified it, made sure that it's smooth and that it is, there's no deficiency or cracks in the samawat. Pay attention. The samawat that is like this at this particular moment, what is it going to turn out to be later at the ending of the surah? And how is Allah going to speak about it? Subhanahu wa ta'ala.